Hi everyone, Amber Repenta here in the Raleigh Eyewitness News Center where we are following the very latest as Hurricane Florence begins to make uh, some of those outer bands start to landfall on the East Coast. We've been following some of our live pictures just to give you an update on the conditions. This is the Frying Pan Tower, which is a former Coast Guard light, light station. This is located about 35 miles offshore of Bald Head Island, North Carolina, and you can see the tattered flag there from the winds. Uh, this tower has seen many hurricanes in its time. It will now face the wrath of Hurricane Florence. The Frying Pan Tower built in 1964 to help ships avoid the shallow frying pan shoals. It is now a very unique bed and breakfast that is off the North Carolina coast. 90 feet above the Atlantic, it is all by itself in isolation. And as long as we continue to receive these live pictures here, we're gonna check on conditions there from the tower. I should add that no one is on the tower right now. This live stream coming to us from explore.org. And we take you live now to Atlantic Beach, North Carolina as well. This Carteret County, as you know, North Carolina's coastal communities all under mandatory evacuations and uh, they are really just ghost towns at this hour. North Carolina's emergency management giving us updates about power outages across the state. Uh, right now, statewide power outage total is currently 12,146, mainly in Carteret and Craven counties. That's according to North Carolina Emergency Management. We are also following uh, some of the tornado watches that are in effect right now. 15 coastal counties under tornado watches until 9 o'clock tonight and a tornado warning has been issued for Hyde, Beaufort and Pamlico counties and we are likely to con continue to see these tornado watches and warnings throughout the day. So we want to get more now on all the conditions that are rapidly changing on our coastline. We check in with one of our meteorologists, Steve Stewart, who's been working very hard uh, with the latest on the track. Steve? All right, all right, thank you, Amber. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, we're all going to be on that uh, right hand side. So there is that potential for an isolated spin up even in our area with the showers that are moving through uh, as we speak. But of course, along the coast, the risk is much higher for now. Winds at 105. It's moving northwest at 10. That is slower. If you remember, that was up around 17 miles an hour. So it's slowing down. And I think that forward motion will continue to slow down as it loses some of the steering currents. But we're going to watch this storm potentially making landfall in North Carolina early tomorrow morning between say 7 and 9 a.m. Uh, give or take. Bald Head Island is here. There's Emerald Isle anywhere in this vicinity. There's still a small chance that it could uh, just scoot south, but it doesn't really matter because the effects are going to be basically the same. Uh, incredibly strong onshore push. Winds are going to be an issue. The storm surge is going to be the biggest issue there. We're going to see incredible amount of flooding and that's going to push all the way up the rivers. Friday 8 p.m. Look how slow it's going to be still um, not that far away from Bald Head Island. The effects are going to be pushed all the way up into our viewing area, even though you don't see us in the cone as this continues to move towards our mountains and eventually around us. The storm is so massive in size, it doesn't matter that the center is well to the south. We're going to be seeing the northern branch of this. All of that's going to be pushing on through. There you see some bands moving through already. Here's a really uh, tight shot there of our Ghost 16 high resolution. You can see these outer bands just come right in there to the outer banks. This is one that's really strong. The winds are really going to gust probably upwards of around 70, 80 miles an hour as that one pushes on through. And where you see on that right hand side, that's the potential to see those spin ups and those tornadoes, but the really heavy rain going on right now. You can see the center with the radar now as it's about 100 miles off the coast. There's that shot Amber was showing again. The seas are really picking up out there and that's just going to continue to increase and imagine those battering waves just nonstop. All the beach erosion is going to be significant. So there you see the showers that are moving on through. We're watching. I'm not seeing any rotation in these yet, but that's another thing we're going to have to look for over the course of the next uh, uh, 24 to 36 hours. Lesser rain to the north, more rain to the south and a tight gradient in here. Uh, any shift north or south is going to be significant difference for who gets really heavy rain. But but let's break it down for you and show you with some towns on it so you get an idea of your community and what we're thinking for now. We might have to fine tune this as the storm evolves uh, and gets on, uh, closer to uh, the coastline and pushes inland. Two to four inches of rain are Northern County, South Hill, Oxford, Roxborough, Norlina, gusts at 30 to 35 miles an hour. In the triangle, six to eight inches of rain possible, gusts at 40 to 45 with sustained winds at 20 to 30. Farther south, you see the sustained winds picking up, the gusts picking up, the rain 
rainfall picking up high impacts to increase uh, threat to life and property. And that includes Holly Springs, Lillington, uh, over to Sanford and Smithfield, Wendell, Wilson and Tarbo, all Tarbo are all included in that. And then we get to the highest risk, the extreme impact with significant threat to life and property. And this is from Dunn, Fayetteville, Clinton, Laurenburg, Lumberton over into Goldsboro too. With winds at 40 to 50, the gusts could be 60 to 70 miles an hour. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a localized gust to 80 miles an hour and that 10 to 20 inches of rain. There could be a gradient, uh, a tight gradient from 10 and done to around the southern Sampson County closer to 20. So again, the farther south, the more potential for this to be a really big event. But look at how big it is from end to end, about 560 miles across that dwarfs from the southernmost point of South Carolina to the Virginia border, which is about 328 miles. We do have our northern counties, the only ones not in the flash flood watch yet. That can change from the triangle southward. Flash flood watch is in effect all the way through Saturday. We have a long ways to go with this. And again, the power outage, lesser chance north, higher chance south. Common sense there with the stronger winds are going to be. And of course, the heavier rain is going to be. This is our GFS, the American model wind gust forecast, not sustained. These are gust forecasts. And look at tonight already in that 80, 90 mile an hour range. And by tomorrow morning, significant wind along the coast. And we're feeling it here too. Again, not a sustained wind, but gusts at 40, 50, and even 60, a good possibility with the strongest farther south, not as bad to our northern counties. But this is Friday p.m. We're still dealing with gusts in that 60 to 70 mile an hour range. And look at that to still Saturday morning and Saturday evening. We have a long way to go uh, with these gusty winds. So the power outage is elevated. High winds are elevated, but flooding is still the main threat we're looking at. Uh, but tornado risk in the moderate category, too. So we have to look for that and look at the size of the seas right now. These are buoy reports at 13 uh, to up to 28 feet at that buoy there. So the storm surge is going to be significant. Significant. Once you get up there, the Cape Fear River, it's only showing around five feet. This data coming from uh, the National Hurricane Center. So Queens Creek is going to flood. Same thing with the uh, New River there around Emerald, uh, Emerald Isle. But once we get into the Noose River, again, this is almost acting like a dam, if you will. The water's trying to get pushed back up. So all the water that's coming into the river. Well, basically it's going to be filling up and it's spilling its banks. So we're going to have some significant flooding in these areas. Not as bad the farther north you go. So it does get a little bit better because the farther south, the Crystal Coast pushing southward looks to be the worst of that surge. Again, some spotty showers out there for now. We'll see more bands of rain coming on through not only tonight, but tomorrow's going to be the heaviest rain for us. And again, those winds could last all the way through Saturday, Amber. Yeah, just uh, incredible conditions that do change very quickly. And ABC 11, of course, is going to be with you every step of the way to monitor all of these conditions. We have our team of reporters, meteorologists, our anchors in house, everybody just working and all the behind the scenes folks as North Carolina is beginning to see the impacts from Hurricane Florence on the coast. Florence going, going to be very slow moving across North Carolina. So there will be a lot of rainfall, extreme rainfall, life threatening flash flooding across the southeast. We are already seeing tornado watches and warnings. There is a tornado warning right now for Hyde, Beaufort and Pamlico counties and the watches. There are a tornado watch currently in effect for 15 coastal counties until 9 p.m. tonight. So be sure to stay here with ABC 11. We'll see you again for another update as Hurricane Florence begins to affect North Carolina. We'll see you at the top of the hour.